Welcome to School of Rock, where complex PCI meets expert opinions. So let's talk a little bit about how intravascular ultrasound works. Well, it's ultrasound waves. And so when the catheter is free and it's not in, in the body or, or in an artery, um, the ultrasound waves get reflected and you don't see anything. They just pass right on through. When they are reflected off the vessel wall, you begin to see an image being formed. And what you can see here, the dark circle in the middle is the IVUS catheter. You see the lumen, the intima, the media, and the adventitia. And this is what it looks like in real life. So what about calcium? So calcium on ultrasound, it's very dense. So it reflects all of that ultrasound. So not many of those ultrasound waves get through the calcium at all. So what this results in is the bright structure that you see there from about four o'clock to 11 o'clock or so. And because the waves don't pass through the calcium, what you're gonna see behind the calcium is just darkness or what we call dropout artifact. And the structures that are deep to the calcium won't be seen at all or might be poorly visualized if it's a thinner rim of calcium. So the more acoustic shadowing that you see back there, the denser the calcium. So if it's dark and black, you know you're dealing with some pretty dense calcium there in the artery. Reverberation artifacts are something that we often see too, and we're going to show you some of this in one of these cases. And so this might indicate thinner calcium. It might also indicate calcium that you've cracked, um, and therefore there's some space in there. Uh, so that really helps us to understand a lot about the, the density and the thickness of the calcium that we are working with and whether or not we've actually made some cracks in that calcium. So a lot of different things we see on, on intravascular ultrasound. I'm just going to give you a few examples here. So, so to the far left, that is a healthy artery. You can see a nice adventitia there, very minimal uh, intima or media. To the right of that, you're starting to see some mixed lipid plaque, a little bit of calcium up there around noon, but not too much. Uh, the next one to the right, the fibrotic one, you can see the adventitia very well, and then the media is made up of just fibrotic tissue there. And then to the right, you can see an arc of calcium in this vessel that's almost 360 degrees, but not quite. And I'm going to let each of those play through so that you can appreciate that in real time. I think the, the point here is it's a bit like learning echocardiography. You've got to see a lot of images so it becomes innate nature. Um, I, mean, I know this is not an IWAS talk per se, but we have a you know one of the newer systems and it does a rapid pullback, um, which is fairly fast compared to some of the older systems. And oftentimes, I think I'm subconsciously doing an assessment as the run is playing back. So, so while for the purposes of this webinar, we'll stop and focus uh, many times you get a qualitative assessment of the calcium burden, just looking at the at the run. And these are things, some of the things that your mind kind of sort of subconsciously picks up. So I would recommend that uh, if this is something you're interested in, not to be fearful of IVUS. I think um, it's quite easy once you get a hang of, of, of looking at the basics of landmarks. And just look at as many IVUSs as you can. Uh, look at it with a senior partner or someone who's more experienced. Um, and then you really start to appreciate the, the, the features of a blood vessel and how to best address it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, you know, when, when I look at echocardiography, you know, I often make fun of my imaging partners and say, wow, you had to have a lot of imagination to see that. Well, I'm sure they would probably say the same thing to me looking at intravascular ultrasound in the cath lab, but it is true. The more you look at it, the better you get. The more you look at it, the better you get. So how do we go about assessing calcium with intravascular ultrasound? I'm going to sort of take you through the way I do it. Everyone doesn't do it the same. I'm sure Salman may have different ways that he may go about this. But there's really three questions that I want to answer when I look at my initial IVUS. First, I want to know how long is the lesion. That's going to tell me, at least help me choose what therapy I might pick. Um, what type of plaque is there? Is it all lipid? Is it fibrotic? Is it calcific? Is it mixed? Um, again, helping me choose tools that I might use to modify that calcium if I believe I need to. 
And then finally, what's the vessel size? Because we want to make sure that we size that scent appropriately to the vessel and not to the angiogram of calcium that we're seeing. So intravascular ultrasound can be very helpful in all three of these manners. Salman, I mean, how do you approach this with IBIS when you're first looking at your IBIS run? It's it's very, very similar. Actually, it's interesting. I've, I've actually got the thing. So we have the new sort of uh, system that's bedside. It's called a Vigo. It's it's like a touch touchpad, and and I like that because I can run it myself. But it's quite simple. So when the IVUS is doing its pullback, I'm looking at the screen. I have a certain speed that I like to set it at. It's two millimeters per second pullback. That gives me an idea of what kind of qualitatively I'm going to see. Um, once the run is complete, I actually jump straight to the long view. I like this view because. I can then pick out the areas where a the you have the 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 smallest lumen size, and I can also pick out the areas where there's the most calcium because you see that shadowing on the long view, and then I just drag the cursor to that point and start assessing from there. So I don't have to like go drag my cursor all over the place. I use that long view to guide me, and once I have that, then I can slowly drag it across and see what the calcium burden is. And one of the criteria, and I think we'll talk about that, is the length of this plaque of calcium um, in whether you need uh, modification or not or modulation or not. And so for me, that's what I do. And then once I've seen that long view and analyzed it, then I'll go back and look at the more nuanced features of well, what's going on at the certain location. And finally, again, you know, you don't have a screenshot, but then the numbers will pop up. You'll see your minimal luminal area, you'll see the reference area, and then I use those numbers. So while it seems like four different steps, actually it's quite much in the workflow. So by the time I'm doing that, you know, my fellows or the technicians have already flushed and prepped IVUS for the next run and we're back to doing the case. It really doesn't take more than 20 or 30 seconds out of the workflow to look at that and, and figure out what you want to do. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. I love, we have a Vigo Plus as well and I love it. I love the longitudinal view. You know how long your stent needs to be. You need to know, you know, the size it needs to be, you know exactly where your calcium is. Um, so yeah, I 100% agree. And the time it takes with the pullback device is very minimal. So I would 100% agree with that. So I'll just go through each of these. So, and here's that longitudinal view that you were talking about, Salman, here at the bottom of the screen. And you can really see the length of the lesion. You can see exactly where the calcium is. So while, while we're watching that pullback in short axis, as you see there um, in movement, once that is done, we have the longitudinal view. So we know exactly where our calcium is, the length of the stent we need, the size of the stent we need. Um, and it's all it, it all comes together pretty quickly. Um, I think as interventionists, we can be really impatient people. I'll speak for myself. I don't have a I don't have an enormous amount of patience, but I have to tell you, using intravascular ultrasound has decreased the length of my procedures rather than increased them because it, it keeps me from doing really stupid things like not modifying calcium. Yes, guesswork is gone. You don't guess at it anymore. You know exactly what. Exactly, exactly. There, there are some things that are fun at guessing at, but I would say dealing with calcium is not one of them. So again, as as Salman was talking about a few minutes ago, you can find your distal landing zone, your proximal landing zone, where you've got fairly healthy tissue, and then you can see the calcium within the lesion there. So you know exactly what amount of artery you need to cover with that stent to treat all of your disease. I'm just going to point out here, you know, oftentimes the issue of remodeling comes up and while it's a very academic concept, we all learn about it in our fellowship and residency and even medical school. But I think this is a nice uh, sort of um, example of how on the long view, the vessel looks a certain way, but when you do the cross section, it looks a different way. And some of it has to do with dropout. But some of it also has to do with the vessel shrinking in the area of the calcification. And this becomes important sometimes when you're picking stent sizes because we don't want to cause overstretch injury either. Um, and again, this is not an Iowa's talk, but I think this helps. And oftentimes, once you've modified that calcium, you see the, the view will brighten up. So if you do an Iowa's run right after, that middle panel will start showing you some speckling outside of the calcium telling you that you've successfully modified uh, the calcium there. So this is an interesting correlation between the cross section on top and the long view at the bottom. Yeah, and I would I would just add to what you're saying about it not being an intravascular ultrasound talk. I honestly don't think you can have a complex PCI talk without an intravascular ultrasound talk, right? I think they're sort of married. There's really no way to separate them anymore with the, with the complexity of disease that we're dealing with. So we've looked at our lesion length. 
Um, morphology, again, we've talked about this a lot. We're going to show you some cases. Is it lipid? Is it fibrous? Is it calcific? Is it mixed? How much calcium is there? And then finally, vessel sizing. And you brought up some very good points there, Salmon, about not oversizing and being able with ultrasound to see areas of negative remodeling as well as positive remodeling so that you can get your stent size much more accurate than you can just angiographically.